What is going on guys? Welcome to episode 12 of my Crystal Palace Football Manager 2019 Let's Play series. Be sure to leave a big thumbs up on this video if you are wanting to see more of this series. Uh, it's going pretty well. I've played some more off camera now. The next four games against Ajax 3-2. We actually did score those first three. Thought, yeah, we were just going to kill him. Well, we did. <laughs> we really did. And then Kasper Dolberg, yeah, he's a quality young striker. Um, as you can see, might just chuck in a scout report there to get on him. Who knows? Might need a striker in the future. You know he's good. But we did kind of control that game for the most part. We might just uh, check that out a little bit for you. Uh, as you can see, the match stats... Did have a lot of chances, but yeah, the dominance was clearly in the first half. Uh, that is for sure. So we're just going to go into the next one. We got Watford away from home. 1-0. Uh, Barati scored 21st minute. And that was the only goal for the match. Uh, Barnsley in the League Cup. That was a... I would have thought it was a straightforward one. We did rotate the team a little bit. Uh, we just... Some players that... Well, it really depends if they were needing match fitness or uh, we just didn't need to rotate some of the other players because their condition was still good, you know, situation. And it was good. We kind of <laughs> did end up winning. Uh, Maya scored those two goals early and we were in a comfortable position. Maybe slacked off a little bit uh, with a bit of complacency uh, late in the game uh, to concede a late goal. But yeah, pretty straightforward. Then the last one just played right now. 3-0, uh, but kind of expected against Stoke City. They're not doing so well this season. Uh, and Alexander Sorlop, yeah, well, you got, we've got to talk about, we've got to talk about some injuries at the moment. <laughs> that's what, that's what we're going to do. So if we go into the tactics, to the normal selection, you can see we've got Fosu Mensa injured. That's five to 11 days. And you know about Lukaku now three to seven weeks. So still a little bit of a break. We're going to be, yeah, uh, missing him. And then uh, Zaha did pick up, it was like about three week injury and now it's gone down, uh, only 12 days. So he may play one game in this episode, we'll talk about that. Uh, Zaha still has some interest, but none of these teams have made bids and I just don't want to let Zaha go. So I put asking price 200 million and really scares them off to make that initial bid to be honest. Uh, so we're in second position, so we're doing very, very well, maybe surprisingly well. The only negative is the money. I know we got to check that out, guys. we got to check that out. Maybe you guys can leave your input. Uh, if you take a look at the expenditure, maybe just for this season, a lot has come from the transfers. You can't deny that. Let's, that's And the wages. So those two together is huge, but we've kind of, we needed to improve the team. So what we need to do is have another successful season this time out, and we're looking to do so. Like Again, if we go to the league, uh, go to the rules, if we finish top four, uh, even top five, that is like 30 million in the bank. But right now we're, vo we're, we're competing with Manchester City for the title, which would be crazy. And of course, we're just going to uh, start kicking off the Europa League. Now we just played one match, that one against Ajax. So hopefully we can have a good campaign in Europa League as well. And what I thought this guy is uh, for this episode, I can do three games in this episode. I know I saw someone say you want to see Ajax, but I thought maybe we'll play the away from home Ajax on camera. Uh, maybe if you guys really like, if you'd like to see me do three games in an episode more regularly, it really depends who the opponents are. Uh, but I just found it fitting in this one, to be honest, because we got Europa League against PAOK. We should beat them even though away from home, but then Chelsea and Man United. So the other two teams are like PAOK and Luzerne. Uh, they might fight for third. Not that it will mean too much. Only if it was Champions League, third will fall into the Europa League. But anyway, yeah, we're going to get straight into this one. Uh, I've already made some changes. Not every single player, of course. Like I said, we we can't make too many changes uh, because of we've got three injuries. <laughs> we've got three injuries as well. So a few rotation players, but then players that will still be starting. Uh, so uh, we can start Wickham. Uh, we have to really... Uh, we have to... Oh, oh Sola. Yeah, because I really see us winning this one for sure. And I want some interest in Wickham. We need to play him to get some interest from teams, to be honest. But yeah, it's still a fairly strong lineup for us. So let's just get straight into the match, lads. So yeah, not too many familiar names in their team. Maybe a couple, but let's just head into the dressing room. Passionately. Yeah, the media have given you a lot of credit. Go out there, put on a worthy display. Pretty motivating talk that was. The players are looking ready for the match ahead. Let's head into the tunnel 
as well, having won your opening match, does this represent a fantastic opportunity to seize control of the group for sure? Um, you expect Ajax to fight back though and get their victory. Yeah, we'll be in a fantastic position. So let's play right now, guys. Let's kick things off. So if you do enjoy this one where I play three games, let me know in the comments and let's see if we can still keep smashing 100 likes in the episodes in this series as we kick off with an absolutely fantabulous start here. Connor Wickham. And yeah, he scores in the opening minutes. Less than a minute there. And he. this is a team where he could dominate even if he hasn't played regularly, not that fit. And yeah, wanting to leave. He's still good enough, but... Yeah, you said, I always see it both sides of the spectrum. They might not be on good form or we're not playing them enough and they want to leave and there's a second goal. This could be a real big win for us. But yeah, that's the other thing as well. They might not be happy at the club, but they want to show they've got talent so other teams show interest. So it doesn't mean they're going to completely be poor. <laughs> so it really depends uh, the kind of match anyway. So yeah, we already scored two. It was like opening eight minutes already. So uh, Alberto Moreno's had a very, very good season as well. He's played, he's got some great ratings. He's won high percentage of tackles. Townsend, this could be a rabble. Really. Let's see if we score. But yeah, Alberto Moreno, he's been a real great season. Uh, great. He's having a great season, we'll say. He's been a great signing as well. That's what was in my mind. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's been a great team performance as well, no doubt. But he's he's stepped up. And now may uh, set this up. And on cue, unfortunately, it's got to be disallowed. Alberto Moreno, that is disappointing. Is he offside there? Oh, he is, but very, very slightly. Like, if he wasn't in the offside position, he still would have scored that. Like, he did, he, yeah, the ball was coming towards him. He still would have been in the position to score, even though he was slightly offside. So it's still good play, I suppose, in a way. Like, he, he was positioned, uh, do you say he's positioned well? Because, I mean, you still think he would have scored that if he wasn't offside, if it was just a step back. But yeah, it all does not matter now. But you can see we're just controlling, going attack after attack. Unfortunately, we lose possession. Here's Crespo. What are you doing? Which guy was that, Benteke? <laughs> uh oh, we could concede. And that led from the loss of possession. That hurts us sometimes, uh, regardless if we're doing well. Uh, that's where our conceded goals come from. And see, but what was that, Benteke? <laughs> yeah, that was a striker's challenge. Uh, attempt at a tackle, no doubt. And then, yeah, that sweat goal there. That was some FIFA stuff. Uh, but they do get that equaliser. A bit disappointing, to be honest. Especially after we have that disallowed one. That offside goal. Uh, th going 3-0 would have been great. And <laughs> now, instead of three goals ahead, we are only one goal ahead. So, it turns into a situation where, oh, maybe we should have been doing better. And I thought we started amazingly. So, I'm going to say don't get complacent out there. Even though, I think regardless of your talk with your team, like Crystal Palace uh, versus the likes of PAOK, you should be able to get the result. See, but I gotta I can't forget we're like Crystal Palace. It's not like we're a dominant top four team, even though that's how we're playing this season. But whenever I'm in the European competition, that's what I'm used to being a top four team. And here we are, Wan Bissaka. Can he get in? Oh, smart ball to Alberto Moreno. I did actually upload a little video clip uh, on Twitter. I very very rare times it like pauses like that. That was just in the game. Uh, that little lag, very very rare, very rare. Maybe once every five or six games. But anyway, yeah, I did upload a little Twitter video of a goal. Uh, Moreno got might show you after this match as we yeah kick on Wickham. Yeah, so hopefully some <laughs> some teams will show interest in Wickham. I think he'll be good for some teams, no doubt. It's not like he's a terrible player, but maybe not uh, on where we're heading. Not where we're heading. Oh, that ball is through. They're through, but they wasted. That was a decent chance. So Benteke probably hasn't had the best of games, most definitely. Let's just bring on Sorloth. He's been on goal scoring form, no doubt as well. Uh, yeah, just uh, give him some more game time. Hopefully come on and score another goal. Keep that goal scoring form going. It's nice to rest players, but yeah, when they're on goal scoring form, you want to play them some minutes and hopefully, yeah, find the back of the net again. And then maybe Juan Bissaka that is on a yellow card. We can bring on Martin Kelly and he can just play right back, play a defensive fullback position. Could be no nonsense fullback, but yeah, fullback is his best role and on defend. 
They've got an opportunity that's over the top. See, it oh, man. It looks like one of, the, like, 3-2. That's It looks like this high-scoring game. It doesn't look like a game we've completely dominated ourselves, even though the stats look different. Complete dominating, uh, completely dominating the possession uh, right there. So let's try and switch this up. Let's try and go positive. I want to kind of go a controlling game now because we know we are the better team without a doubt. So there are just a few changes as you can see that more shorter passing style. Maybe mess around. Maybe go fairly wide or say fairly narrow. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really notice too much of a change when I do that. Uh, a lot of the time is just on very narrow but leave on fairly narrow just for the sake of changing another option uh, to switch things up. I did want to just wait a little bit there so we can make another change. Who do you think? Schlup we don't really have a change for, unfortunately. And we will need someone on that left side. Let's we bring on Berardi. Bring on Berardi for Schlup. Then we'll switch Townsend all the way over. Then Berardi inside forward, support, Townsend... Uh, yeah, he's on the left side. He's probably more preferred there. So, <laughs> still pushed up, actually. Okay. See, he's natural in that position, but doesn't have a natural role. So, uh, that's what we've got to deal with. Same like Moreno. We've got multiple players in that situation. So, let's just confirm the changes. Anyway, we'll still be all good. But we're only a goal ahead. Be careful, though, yeah? I know. But, surely you'll see us holding on to this. Four minutes at a time, and... Oh, there's going to be a chance. There should be a chance. It's not... Oh, and hopefully it's not for them, because it will be a very, very late one to concede, because the highlight started when it was just more than 40 seconds. That means there's a chance. <laughs> Trust me, I know. Trust me, I know. That's how long I've been playing Football Manager. <laughs> but when the highlight starts, when, there's, when it's on 20... When it's if it was ninety three minutes and the twenty second, uh, then you know, yeah, that's the kind of forty second left default end of game highlight. But it was a bit more than that, so I'm like, oh, we could really finish things off. And Sawloff does continue his goal scoring form. So there we go. Just know how football manager were. I knew there could have been a chance. It wouldn't just been a nothing highlight. Now it will be. Now it will be just playing out time. We won't score from this, even though we may have had a chance there. The ref uh, blew the whistle just in time, and it makes it look a bit uh, comfortable, a bit more comfortable. If we kill them 71% possession, even though uh, during towards the end of the game, we try to keep a bit more of that uh, purposely, uh, which help us finish off in style. But look at that, 26 shots. If <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. We st Four goals, can't complain with four goals. So just going to say we're happy with the result and the way they played. Every single player, look at that reaction. How about that? I just closed my blinds a little bit. I have a good position. I have my computer right in front of it <laughs> in my room. So, yeah, it was just a bit bright in my face. I noticed the light. So it may look better to you guys now. Just more normal. <laughs> Not too bright in my face. But anyway, uh, more importantly, see, this is the good thing. Getting money. We're going to be getting money by winning games in the Europa League. So, hopefully, that's going to help out the balance. And that's why we want to make sure, yeah, we, we put in uh, good performances in these competitions. Because it's going to help out our situation at least, yeah, our situation at least a little bit. <laughs> uh, but let me know what you think. Is it just because we have spent a lot on transfers? But also, I did want to go back, show you we signed a new three-year sponsorship deal. That's worth uh, 215k per annum. And also, Juan Bisaka and Florentino Luis were both... In the Young Player of the Month awards there. Like first and second respectively. That's <laughs> dominating. Uh, our young players dominating. Some of the best in the league. How about that? And once more you can see it's all in the training. Saw a lot. Uh, top trainers. 9.2. Uh, very very good. Then Berardi, Florentino, Luis. You'll see that reflected. For the young players obviously in their development as well. Uh, not just performances. So that's good. But... It's all lot, especially him, 23 years old. He still has a little bit of growth in him, which you can see right now. And with the youth training, Luke O'Connor, he seems to be always up there. You may notice that as well. So you can see development coming along, coming along really nice. Let me know what you think I should do with these youth guys, just apart from the general, like the training. I have like an under-18s coach, manager, or whoever it is. Someone, someone's dealing with their training, but should I work on additional focuses, something like that? 
let me know. When you've got these great guys with potential to get through these young regens, through your youth intake, what do you guys do to get them to their absolute best? So this big one against Chelsea, the good thing is international break after this one uh, before we play Man United, so we don't have to be so careful with the fitness. But of course, we don't want our players to be injured, though we're going to get straight into this one real tough. Uh, it is a bit of a decision uh, because... For large, large majority of the games, uh, we keep it that attacking style just against these teams like Chelsea, Man United, you know, the top four, the teams that are supposed to be seen as top four in the league anyway. Uh, when you play away from home against them, you might think something different, especially when we play the high defensive line and stuff, but I like to just get into the game instead of changing it, because then I keep changing it here, but uh, I'm still confident. I'm still confident in our, in our team's ability, so we have made some rotations uh, brought back in Berardi and see Solos going to start with Benteke while we're missing Zaha. But the good thing, Zaha and Fosu Mensa, they should be available for the Man United uh, match. So we'll be able to utilize them in some capacity at least as we progress now into this one against Chelsea. Because that's the thing, the way we're playing, I feel it's so weird because our team you probably just still see the player's quality is about like a mid-table team. Uh, we have improved it a bit like with a Berardi signing and uh, Florentino Luis who's going to become absolutely fantastic player. <laughs> One of the best in the world. Then Moreno as well. So we, we've got to say we have improved the strength of the team. But you couldn't say we're a top six team. Like, yeah, I don't think where you would expect us to be finished. I, I can't even remember what the media prediction... What was the media prediction of where we're going to finish for the season? It's 8th, okay, so it has pushed up a bit, but not quite that media prediction of a 5th or a 6th yet, like the, a top 6 uh, Premier League side. We're, we're pushing towards that, aren't we, though? So assertively, we owe Chelsea after what happened in the last match, so again, we've got to keep that mind, uh, in mind. And then going into the tunnel, we come in good form... I enjoy these matches a lot. Here we go. So I just want to gauge how the first five, ten minutes go. If we're not completely being dominated, that is a good sign. So let's see. <laughs> you just wouldn't want to concede an early goal. Oh, like, do you, like, you see that and then you get so thankful it wasn't one of your players. You see the, the red light up and you think it's going to be one of your players, but then you just get so relieved. So, that might disrupt things a little bit for Chelsea, and you can really see we're not controlling possessions so well at the moment, even though it's not something we're trying to do, play that attacking direct style, but we're going to drop to balanced, and we'll drop the defensive line, we'll sit a bit lower, we'll sit a bit lower there, and I did take it off recently, but we'll put get stuck in back on, I think, to be that aggressive um, against Chelsea. But I noticed I was starting to get quite a few yellow cards, so I just took it off. But it's what I had for a long duration. And then we'll have a slightly more direct style, and then we'll keep this, the standard tempo, standard tempo for now, and maybe still hit early crosses in. So without exactly playing on the counter has got some aspects of a countering style. And with some changes, we could score! We could score. Come on. Look at that. That's instant. Instant. Berardi. Oh, did you see that move there to get in good position? To put the ball in. And Sorloth. I told you already. He seems more dangerous. Like, how instant was that? That. Seconds. Literally seconds, those changes. See, it's all instinct for me. That's why I base my tactics off, and when we get into matches, I just judge off the situation and, and make the changes accordingly. There's no kind of... Obviously, there's certain things that I think are good that work and everything like that, but there's no set things every single match to do for sure. When people say, like, yeah, let us download your tactic, but it's not always going to have the same results because there's just things in my mind I will change for certain matches, just how I gauge that a match is going. The, yeah, that's just me. And you'll notice that I don't change the exact same things every single time. Some little different changes. So it's all about instinct. And schlap. It's all about instinct to start dominating. Alexander saw a lot. How about that? But to me, that's a decent reaction. But I'm not going insane because I'm not surprised. 
I'm not surprised because I knew what we needed to rectify and change to get things on our terms and Benteke and Sorloth. Um, yeah, it's a kind of a deadly partnership. They're both hard to stop in the air and suddenly 2-0 away from home against Chelsea. So, let's see. No doubt Chelsea got an early injury, so maybe it threw him off ever so slightly. Now, Azard, I, I swear, mate, they... they, they <laughs> Seriously, a own goal, own goal, mate, on a level, they're trying to take us back, really, that's so annoying though, James Tonkins, man, I don't think I can fault him, we're just defying, <laughs> defying the odds in this match, man, they're trying to claw them back, claw them back, into the match, maybe a shout, just say, st I'm still going to say praise because it's been a very good first half. Of course, it had to be, like I said, a ridiculous own goal to concede because they wouldn't have scored if it wasn't for that in that play. I'm pretty sure anyway. Now, Kovacic, we don't want to lose this lead. We don't want to lose this lead. So second half, we're going to have to do exactly the same. Okay. Getting another goal back, cancel out that own goal at least, and I'll be happy. I'll be happy enough. Wan-Bissaka to Berardi. Ooh, just not enough. Not enough. Don't concede another. Good pressure. Good pressure. That's what we normally see with our defending. Uh, when they're in that position for a cross, yeah, make sure it's not a clear one. But, yeah, I'm still disappointed with that own goal, man. It would have been so good going in 2-0. There we go. Passionately. I have to say happy. I wasn't... I was thinking about don't get complacent, but I, I just felt... A play at least one would get not encouraged by that that was that was real good the couple goals we scored to do that against Chelsea now the challenge is going to be to hold on to it I'm not too disappointed we we did concede a goal but I don't expect to concede in that fashion again because it was that own goal in normal cases we would have defended that cleared it as per normal so let's just see what they're going to do with it now Marcos Alonso don't let him get that clear cross in that was a good goal, to be fair. They did well. They did well. Can't be too mad about that. But Chelsea are getting right into it. They just realised, for sure, they can't be <laughs> they can't be losing against us at home. So they really stepped things up. But it's not like Willian, we left him unmarked. We had someone on him. Who was that? I can't even click him. Yeah, Alberto. Yeah, Alberto Moreno. You know, he's not maybe the most deadly in the air. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah. As you can see, and he's pretty short. That's the uh, that's where it comes to bite you, unfortunately. But he's so good in other ways. It's all players have negatives, unfortunately. But uh, I'm just gonna keep things going, like attacking wise with the ball, uh, with our tactics with the ball. If you get, now <laughs> there's <laughs> in possession, yeah, in possession. I feel that's perfect for this one against Chelsea. We scored a couple goals in the first half, so I think that's how we're gonna score a winning goal. I, I think it will have to be. Maybe just some fresh legs, mate. We're missing. We're missing that pace up front still, Zaha. That's what we really need. And Benteke, oh, I'm really not sure. I am really not sure. Wickham, he's on goal-scoring form. I just don't expect him to score against Chelsea. Did all right in the last match, so maybe playing off form, if anything, that could help. So just that single change. Let's see. I won't be disappointed just holding on to a point, though. To be fair, we still got a couple changes up our sleeves, subs. So we'll take off Luis uh, Mayer. He can be a good, bit creative. Good passer of the ball. And Townsend could be a good impact with his pace. Oh yeah, schlup. Let's. Well, <laughs> man, I, I I walk on the wild side, don't I? For sure, with a bit of risk. But hey, I like winning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if we go ahead and concede, on me, on me, but there's a highlight right away. Could this be where it goes the other way, or is it going to be another instant change? And in like, I mean, look at that pass. you got to be doing better, and that's what's going to... It was that shit, mate. Oh, seriously... It was the giveaway possession. It was the giveaway of possession that caught. That's what makes me mad. I made some changes. Sure, we push someone up more attacking. You might, oh, you might concede. But 
That disappoints me. No, yeah, because we're not going to get it back now. Just We'll go attacking because we need a goal back. And we'll just go shoot on sight. Yeah, try and get some opportunities. Go extremely direct, but... I can't see it. I just see that as the winner for Chelsea. Last 10 minutes. Most likely, it will just be where it plays out and where apparently nothing happens in the last 10 minutes of the game, apart from one of our players getting injured. So you tell, when we're, you can see, when we're looking to... I'm not going to, like I said, we're not going to score. We just get an injury to Berardi, of course. And Willian, they could have really finished it off. Once we, we had that great start to the match, it just it fell, went downhill in the worst ways. The worst ways possible. So who knows? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's funny because we're still in it technically. A goal to equalize. Yeah, it's just... It's disappointing. It kind of... It, it ends on a, a on a negative note. We end up losing and then get a player injured. It just... Mm. But I feel... I feel we did our hardest. We went our hardest. And... If anything, they're going to score. Yeah. Because, yeah... That's disappointing. Yeah, it's going to end up 4-2. And people are going to see this result on the score sheet. And it's going to look like just a normal Chelsea win. But we know it was more than that in the first half for sure. At least shows you what we can do. But when you're playing it's a side like Chelsea, when you got their quality, uh, yeah, you know by the end of the match, yeah, they're going to prove that. There we go. Yeah, comp just a rabble right now, unfortunately. It's, it's disappointing though. That we can't keep that level for a whole match. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's terrible t for 10-5-2, though. That first half, just completely gone. Because look at the stats Chelsea have by the end of the match. Complete dominance. And you say they deserve to win. We were 2-0 ahead. We were 2-0 ahead at some point. So, And then that own goal, it, that would have killed the confidence. If they scored a normal goal, and maybe not an own goal, maybe our defenders wouldn't... I'm just speculating at this point. We don't know what would have happened. And you might have said, like, Chelsea would have still got it back regardless. But I hate the fashion. I can understand if Chelsea, they were too good, they came back. But just the fashion, how they came back into it, and then how they got the confidence back and our confidence lowered. I just don't like how it played out. I'm just mad at that. I'm so, say unlucky. It would have been nice to win. Like, on another day, man, could have worked out differently with that lead. Uh, at least Berardi only the bruised ankle, so he's out for one day only. Yeah, disappointing collapse. But maybe it was just unavoidable. <laughs> maybe it was unavoidable. you got to say, Chelsea's too good uh, compared to yeah our players. Uh, as, as much as we had a great effort. I was just excited because I thought we were going to go on to win. After those changes, felt like we were controlling them. Made it 2-0 suddenly. Oh, man. So let's just hope we don't get any injuries during the international break now. But here we made it through finally. Game against Manchester United. Uh, glad this one is at home. I'm still confident with attacking our style like normal. Regardless who we play. As long as we're playing at home. See then Chelsea go down. Uh, like yeah they haven't been. I'm not surprised Man City beat them. Uh, to be honest. If we were able to get the start against them. So there we go. And if we beat Man United here. We could overtake them. We will take their position because Tottenham's played their game as well. We could go third by beating Manchester United. This will be big. This will be very, very big. So we take a look here. Zaha. Zaha is available when he's not like not match fit or anything like that. So that's why we're going to drop Wickham out, really. And Zaha, we're not going to start him. He could be a good impact sub that pace. We'll start Benteke, Sorloth. We've been able to score goals with them starting, so we keep that in mind. And, yeah, we're not going to make too many forced changes. We're, we've kept a pretty consistent starting eleven uh, without being a big team with, like, say, like a Man City, Chelsea, with a lot of players that are going to be re requesting to be starting. Uh, we've done well in this fashion, to be honest. So let's just get straight into this one. Well, okay, this is some Manchester United squad. Take a look. Icardi there, Douglas Costa, Milinkovic. Whew. Decent. These, like, how many signings have, like, when did they go for these? I want to I take a look at their transfer history. Was it this season? They brought in Savage, Douglas Costa, 
And then Pepe on a free from... <laughs> how about that? Interesting. Uh, Pepe, he's still pretty strong attribute-wise, but... Yeah, it doesn't look he's playing so much. And then Danilo Perez. They've just gone hard. They've gone hard with the signings, Manchester United. And yeah, Akadi was the first season signing. And then Camacho, Agent Silva, they've gone huge. So no doubt they've got some better quality. So it will be, even though it's at home, it will still be good to beat them. And I'm more confident at home. So assertively, again, we owe them after what happened in the last match. Again, that does pretty well. Like we got a good start against Chelsea. Um, and Herrera is missing, but they've still got players that's going to do the job anyway. So let's see how we're going to go. Can we get another good start? And it will be a similar case, even if this is home. you got to play 90 minutes against these top teams for sure. And then with some luck along the way as well. Let's see. So this is an early highlight here. Well done, Schlupp. He's had a pretty good season. I was expecting Sola to score, and even Berardi on the rebound uh, could not make that. And that's the thing, you've got to take those chances as well. Because, yeah, definitely not guaranteed we'll get so many against United. But here we go, we look to be starting so well. I told you there's a huge difference away and then at home. Doesn't matter who we're playing against, but I feel these couple early chances could end up being costly. They could end up being costly. See, we should try and play a short passing play, apparently. But you can see we're creating early opportunities. If anything, these crosses are so dangerous. And this is where we're looking very, very vulnerable. Honestly. Told you, we get a couple early chances. Don't take them. And then, but you'll see... Uh, being punished with those balls in from the crosses. But again, take a look at this. you got to win. Mm, where are you? Where are you to win those headers? Oh. And obviously it's not something so regular because you see me getting good results, no doubt. Or not conceding so many goals. It's just against these good teams. Man, they work. They find a way to work them. Get them goals. But, see, we're pushing forward once more. We've got to take these opportunities. Sorloth. Milivojevic. Luis. Oh, Berardi. Come on, Benteke. We get that goal back. Uh, duly deserved, though. And see there, Phil Jones make a mistake. <laughs> but we deserve that. We deserve to get a goal in this first 15 minutes. Uh, it was a nice nice work there. Lewis went back to Milivojevic and Berardi, Benteke. And he had to get it on the rebound as well. So, again, maybe a bit lucky for that. But should have finished on first attempts. Come on. But hopefully this brings the form more into our court now. Or, yeah, we have the, that momentum if anything. Because look, they only have one shot. One shot in the half when suddenly they got four. So this is... I'm having a feeling they're going to score. Because <laughs> they're starting to get a few more shots in this short period of time. Oh, again, it's the... We've got to... Oh, man. Tactically, as a whole, we look very good. Uh, the negative is maybe trying to stop those crosses coming in. So if you have any feedback for that, let me know what I should change without being too extreme. Flor Florentino! Florentino! Florentino Luis. Oh my God. You see his wonder kid potential right there. That's his best goal for us. How about... That's his first goal of the season. What a hit. That's Pogba-like. He's got a similar style to Pogba. And with that goal, you see it. And against United, and Pogba, he's going to be like, oh shit, I'm not going to be the best central midfielder in the... Not that he's... Just in terms of that powerful, really beastly central mid. That box-to-box -box type and... Yeah, that powerful, strong mid. That's got that scoring ability as well. I'm, I've got to say, we're happy with the performance. We came back after going down. There we go. There we go. How about that? How about that? What a goal. What a goal. Florentino Luis is worth all the money. You know, yeah, we're not looking so great, our balance at the moment. But hopefully, he's going to lead us to some success. And it's not like... I didn't even use all our transfer budget, and lucky we didn't concede there. Come on, stay focused. Stay focused. Yeah, I've still had about, like, 20 million in the transfer budget or something, but I knew we couldn't spend it all. Come on, yes, let's get it. Make it 
Okay, Sorloth's gonna get to this. Get back to Barati. Oh, uh, see? Oh, sorry. But I say sorry. <laughs> like I made that happen. Just random. But, anyway. Oh, we lose possession there. Hopefully it's not going to lead to a goal. No, no, no. Costa. Jo Phil Jones has had a terrible game. Man United's defence have been... Apart from Luke Shaw, because he got an assist. Their defence is looking really terrible. So, like a 5.8 for Phil Jones. For me, this is Zaha time. Has to... Yeah, take off Berardi. Then we can bring on Zaha in his most prolific position, probably as a winger. See, he doesn't even have a completely natural role. Isn't that crazy for Zaha? Because it's not as a striker, or maybe on the left. But we can't, at least there. Okay, let's just see. Maybe on that side. Yeah, okay, the inside forward on the left side. But I thought he had previously on the right. But anyway, we'll just play him on a winger as attack, <laughs> regardless. Because that's how he fits into the formation, really. So there we go. And Burnley take a lead against Arsenal. Come on, one beside. He's been so good for his age. He He's still a very young player in terms of being regular first team. Benteke, nothing happens from that. But there still could be something. See, De Gea, he feels unsure, I think. Or was he just taking his time? Who knows? Because this could lead to a goal, regardless. Martial to Akadi. Knew that was going to be a goal because Akadi's too good when they get in that position. Wow, so they, they equalise. Oh, I want to win this, man. I felt like we've had the lead. See, Martial, we were blocking that, but Akadi just needs a second with some space. Okay, instant highlight here. I feel some someone's going to win this match. I can't see it ending a draw. Now, Martial looking so dangerous. Was that worthy of a highlight? Or it's, yeah, oh, come on. Okay, suggested to play some more long balls. So that will uh, add to more direct passing and hit early crosses. And along with that, we're going to take off Schlupp and bring on Townsend. Here we go. No funny business. And we're going to switch them. We're going to switch them because, like you know, Zaha, that's where his, yeah, that's where his natural role is out on that side. And then, do we go all attack? Because Benteke plays support. So, okay, yeah, three attack roles or duties in attack. <laughs> um, up forward, up front for us. So, let's let's go with that. We're chasing goal and leave one sub available so he could make a more defensive change if we do, in fact, take a lead. And Oh, it's a free kick for Pogba. And lucky he does not score there. Man, it would be so good for us to win with that Luis goal. Florentino Luis. What? That that seems like it should be a winner. Like a match-winning goal. But we're still going to need another for that. This could be it. Sorloth! Alexander Sorloth scores his 10th goal of the season. What a big man. I actually just signed him uh, on a new contract. Uh, he was requesting that. And he's on some ridiculous form right now. Starting this save, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure with him how good he will be. But, oh, the technique and just the angle of that. And I'm so glad we kept, yeah, a, a sub up our sleeves. Because then we could take Benteke's on, yeah, we'll take one of the strikers off. And we'll bring in, I don't want to put, like, another defender. I'm going to bring in, like, a defensive, another defensive mid instead. So we can go like that. And we'll drop Townsend to the wing. Yeah, just play him as a winger there. Uh, can we do the same with Zaha? Because I was wondering, yeah, I thought his yeah his rating will be too low for that. So still keep him in a preferred inside forward on supports. But also, no doubt, Manchester United, they're going to be trying to score a goal now. So I don't want to switch up from the, the main style of ours. We should tell our team to not... <laughs> now we shouldn't try it. But no, that'll be kind of part of this style. We're just trying to uh, hit him on the counter, even though we're playing attacking. And maybe... Maybe... Let's drop, drop back to balance. Drop back to balance. We just want to hold on to this now. And we should. But there's a highlight. Why did that... Why when you're leading so many highlights... Oh, man. What's happening? Icardi... 
Okay. <laughs> but when you're tr- when you're the one trying to get that late winner, there's like no highlights in the last 15 minutes when you're trying to push everyone forward. <laughs> Just find that so funny. Uh, but anyway, was that it? Uh, there's still a... Finish them off then. If we're going to do that. Okay. Is that going to be it? Or there would have been literally no point of showing that throw in. Okay. Maybe something is going to come. Juan Bissaka gets it in, or kicks it straight to De Gea, essentially. Worth a highlight? Uh, barely. Barely. But, yes, we've got it. That's going to be it. Yes! We beat United. Get in, get in. Come on, we hold on late. With such a tight game. To really play the same as Man United did. Exactly same shots, exactly same on target. <laughs> the same total fouls as well. Possession really similar. Also, we competed, even though it's at home, and I know we do much better at home, away, maybe we would have lost, like Chelsea, sure, but say to compete against Manchester United and get the better of them, and that's what I've been happy with in games where, uh, against better teams, where it's been even stats-wise. Chelsea dominated us, uh, really, when you look back on the stats and just looking at the match as a whole, yeah, uh, they deserve the win, but I love when we can get, uh, get the result when it's been a tight game, when maybe it could have just finished as a draw, it was just a special performance. And Florentino, this could be the making of him. Because, yeah, most eyes on him in this match against United. Really, a lot of uh, a lot of people viewing. Not just fans, obviously, but then, uh, yeah, just a big viewership. So it could put his name on the map even more so if it hasn't done so yet in this football manager world. And look at that. How about that headline? Crystal Palace show class to upstage Manchester United. Ooh, it was big. He's, he's going to be, he is going to be something special, I swear to you guys. And he's very similar to uh, to Paul Pog. We cannot deny that. And mostly judging off his attributes, uh, that's that's why. If you take a look at his weight, yeah, maybe not. Maybe he's not as strong. But st- if you look at his strength attribute, not too bad. Uh, maybe, yeah, we can bulk him up a bit. So there we go, guys. That was that was a big episode. We finished third now. <laughs> At the end of the episode, we end in third. That's not too bad. After leapfrogging Manchester United, after we did lose against Chelsea, so they upped into up into second there. So hey, we're at two wins, two uh, yeah, two wins out of three matches there. But out of the Chelsea and Man United games, if you told me I was going to win one of them but lose the other, I would have took that. I would have took. <laughs> maybe even getting a point from one of them uh, to be fair because I would have seen yeah definitely Chelsea would have been tough to get any result away from home but I still thought Man United would have been too good for us but anyway guys uh, big episode but if you did enjoy this I would really appreciate that leave a big thumbs up let's keep hitting 100 likes on this series and if you want to see daily uploads of this just let me know in the comments and that support obviously will motivate me for that as uh, yeah, you know I'm doing my FIFA series as well, but hey, I'm loving recording this. It seems the more we do this, the exciting, the exciting, uh, the save is, the more exciting it gets because there's so many things, so many positives going on right now with Crystal Palace. Like over the seasons, like as the seasons pass, we're only going to be improving our team, surely, uh, as seasons go by. I always do that, no doubt, but obviously if we're succeeding, uh, we'll get more money in to hopefully fix that trouble. And yeah, like, Who knows where we could end up with Crystal Palace by the end of this, but I will leave it there. Like I said, leave a big thumbs up if you're enjoying this, and I'll catch you guys in the very next video.